Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta 8 and iOS 17 public beta 6 have been out for about a week and a half to two weeks at this point. We'll talk about a couple new features that have been found since the iOS 17 beta 8 what's new video was released. We'll also talk about the overall experience and some news and the experience is based on my use of using the 14 pro max full time and iPad pro and also your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's 32,000 votes and 228 comments. Comments. I've read all of those. We'll take a look at some of the comments toward the end of the video and see what you had to say as far as the experience, but we'll talk about the overall bugs and much more. But first let's talk about iOS 16.6.1 that released the other day. If you're not running iOS 17 betas, this is the current public update iOS 16.6.1. And I had a separate video about this. It turns out the security updates within this are very serious and definitely need to be installed. So as you can see, there's two of them on Apple's security website for image IO and wallet. These fix those issues along with the watch OS update and also Mac OS update. So if you go back, you can see those two updates here. We'll go to Mac OS, same sort of vulnerabilities that have been addressed. The same is true for watch OS. So make sure that you install those on those devices. If you're not already running it, or if you're running iOS 17, I would expect it with the next update that comes out. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Also with iOS 16.6.1, many have asked me if it fixes the issue with the green display issue. Some people were seeing their screens go green after iOS 16.6 was installed. However, this seems to be more related to hardware issues, not software, people either dropping their phones, something happening to them. We're not really sure, but iOS 16.6.1, I don't think is going to fix that or any software update seems to be a problem with the display itself. So let me know if you've seen any different, but so far I've seen that that's mostly a hardware issue. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention is I had a user by the name of will show me that Apple after updating to iOS 16.6.1 sent him some feedback on feedback. He reported earlier about system services issues. So he had some settings that were disabled in system services under low location settings. So if you go down, go to system services, if you disabled this, then you rebooted your phone, they would turn themselves back on after it rebooted. After this update, it appears Apple has fixed that. So that's something he got an email from Apple. He shared with me that shows that they've resolved the issue with the latest update. So that's good news. If you were having that issue, maybe you disabled a couple of these. I typically don't recommend it as they're used for many different features throughout the phone. But if you wanted to turn off things such as significant locations or something else you could, and it shouldn't turn itself back on. Now, as far as before we talk about features, I wanted to mention a couple things with the Apple event, the Apple events, just a couple days away. And again, you can see that on apple.com with all of the times and everything where we'll be able to watch that and more. So just go to apple.com, scroll down and you'll see the event there. You'll be able to watch it here on YouTube and other places, but there's some last minute news according to Mark Gurman with the iPhone 15. And the first thing is according to last minute news from Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, the iPhone 15 pro, and this is just a model I showed the other day in dark blue could be the lightest pro phone since the iPhone 10 S. So the iPhone 10 S 10 S max were a little bit lighter than the current pro and pro max models. And this could be the lightest since then the iPhone 10 S not the 10 S max is 177 grams where the 14 pro is 206 grams. If the iPhone 15 pro is lighter, it would have to be between the 10 S and 11 pro or around 178 to 187 grams. That's because it would be made of titanium. We expect the sides to be titanium and they're not expected to be glossy like these models. Models. Instead, they're expected to be more of a brush titanium or matte finish. So that'll be really nice. Also, the iPhone 15 has now been said to have much better battery life. That's something all of us have wanted. The iPhone 14 models haven't been the greatest with that, especially with some of the beta updates. That's to be expected a little bit, but it should be much, much better due to the chipset and more. So in just a few days, we'll know that for sure. And also at the event, we expect the iPhone also an Apple watch, but also an update to AirPods. And the update we expect for AirPods is just to the case. According to Mark Gurman, we would expect them to switch it to USB-C for the AirPods pro two. Unfortunately, regular AirPods such as AirPods three are not expected to get that update along with the AirPods max until 2024. So we could see them just switch out the case for the AirPods pro two or something else, not the whole lineup at this point. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but something I wanted to mention. Now, as far as new features, there's a couple things I wanted to share. The first one has to do with standby mode on iOS 17. So if I bring in this anchor stand, we'll place it sideways here. 
And if we turn it off, so it sort of goes to sleep into standby mode and in standby mode, of course, we have different clocks. We can scroll through photos and more, but we also have a new call interface using Siri. So let me go ahead and try that Siri call Zach Zolo. And so you can see we have a call, the time, the name, the Memoji, FaceTime, mute and end, and then the volume here as well, where we could send it to maybe Mac Studio or iPhone or something else. So a really nice interface. I hadn't actually seen that elsewhere with standby, so I thought I'd share that. Also, there's something a little bit new when you're airplaying to a HomePod. So let me go ahead and do that. Maybe we'll play a song here. And it's difficult to get to show up everywhere, but I've seen it on the lock screen, also in the AirPlay screen. When you're tapping the HomePod, it actually shows up, where it actually shows the real photo of a HomePod. It's animated, it turns, and then shows the actual HomePod. I've seen this with this HomePod Mini, as well as a full-sized HomePod. If I go to my notifications, it's not there, but sometimes it shows up with the full eye icon there other times it disappears so it's still a little bit buggy but something that i've noticed that's new there's also a nice improvement to watch os 10 and the latest beta if you're in an app and you want the notification center it was difficult to get before it just didn't work now press and hold at the top and pull down and you can go right into it that works from any app you'll actually feel haptic feedback it will show the notification center then you just swipe down so it's really simple and it works in any app now as far as releases this week we had a safari technology preview version 178 release that released on september 6th and we also had a release this week with tvos so not only ios 16.6.1 ipad os 16.6.1 and mac os 13.5.2 but watch os 9.6.2 and then tvos 17 beta 9. many expected we would get ios 17 beta 9 but it seems we don't need that and Apple will instead skip that and probably release iOS 17 RC next. What that means is that's the release candidate, the last version of the final release before it's released to the public. That could be the public release if they don't find any additional bugs in it. So I would expect that after the Apple event on the 12th. Based off of that information, that's probably what we're going to see. We'll have the RC then, and depending on what Apple decides to do, we've had the final version come out the next day, or we've had it come out the following Monday on the 18th. That's what we think is likely on the 18th, but we don't know 100%. So we could have the RC on the 12th, final release on the 18th, and then the iPhone should launch on the 22nd based on what they've done in the past. So all of those things are going to happen this coming week. Also, we thought we'd expect iOS 16.7 RC as that's been in testing, but so far we haven't seen any mention of that. So it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. Now, as far as overall camera improvements and things like that, with this particular update, I've shown some of the photos comparing beta seven to beta eight. I don't think there's much of an improvement there, but there's definitely improvement with the camera from iOS 16 to iOS 17. I took some pictures on a morning walk and they turned out pretty nice. I actually had it raw turned off. So these are straight after it processed it and everything else. I think it looks pretty good. Some people may think it's a little oversaturated or the HDR is a bit too much, but I think it looks pretty decent. Also last week I took some photos, as you can see here, comparing beta eight with beta seven. I really don't think there's much of a difference there. So in general, I think it's better than iOS 16, but not much different compared to beta seven, but they at least improved it some. As far as connectivity, overall, it's been pretty good for me. I've had no issues with beta eight. In fact, I thought it was going to be an issue for a little while, but it seems like it's staying connected. There may be some issues with CarPlay connectivity, but that's something completely different. Connecting to the internet, scrolling through different apps and connecting to the internet, streaming music seems to work okay as far as that part goes. I haven't had Wi-Fi connectivity issues either. So you'll see I only have two bars where I'm at now. I'm inside a brick building, so signal doesn't travel well through brick, but it seems to be good overall. As far as bugs, well, we don't really know what they've fixed in this update as they haven't really said, but most people say it's running very stable. It's quite good, very reliable, and this is the finale for the betas. So this is the last beta that we'll have before the release candidate. So it's basically what we expect as far as features. It should be feature complete for the most part, and the RC would be the public version unless they find something else and then they just fix those bugs. They don't add features. So that's what I would expect. We could get a couple extra things with iPhone 15, but they would be specific to that device typically. As far as the release notes, bugs and bug fixes. Well, if we go into the feedback app, go back here. If you haven't seen this already, 
be sure to check this out and see all of the things they've resolved and all of the current bugs that are still there. There's many more resolved things than there are known issues. So that's a great sign. We're getting close to that final release. Like I said, as far as bugs that have been fixed, well, I'm not really sure as I really haven't experienced a whole lot of bugs. We have that notification bug, of course, that sort of just pops in. That's an issue. But other than that, that's more of a visual glitch. It doesn't affect the usability of the phone. Bugs I have seen is CarPlay disconnecting or crashing in music, particularly when you're connected. So I was using it, music will just stop and crash altogether. I'll actually have to go in, close out the app, then it will work again. I've seen this over and over and I've seen others comment about it as well. Also recently, I've seen some people say they have an alarm set, it's set down, it's charging or just on a nightstand, not charging, and it wouldn't even wake up. I've seen that from a couple people that might be an issue for some. Some are experiencing lag with things such as stickers and messages and occasionally just playing music and swiping home. So if I turn that down, swipe home, sometimes that didn't even show the animation where it went into the dynamic island. So there's little bugs that are mostly visual throughout the OS where sometimes it's stuttery, especially if you're on a little bit older device. It doesn't seem to slow anything down for older devices, but some devices such as iPhone 11 sometimes see it stutter. So haven't seen too much of that, but most of the time it's pretty fast. Again, some people are still seeing random vibrations from the phone with haptic feedback and then also whether or not reporting the correct location. There's some freezes and slowdowns throughout most in the camera people have said if they're having slowdowns and freezes it's in the camera and then the phone would get hot at that point otherwise it seems to be pretty good shortcuts is also slower delayed for some so still some issues there there's an issue with the magic keyboard i've mentioned that it it hasn't gone away typically if you're trying to use the keyboard and if you're trying to use the keyboard and then maybe you tap the forward button to jump forward in a video the keyboard just won't do anything but if you tap the screen double tap for it to jump in the video then tap the keyboard it works or you can disconnect and reconnect so there's still some odd glitches with the magic keyboard on the ipad but it should be something that hopefully is fixed in the final version we'll know of course once it's released performance is pretty good overall as i mentioned with the occasional bug or hiccup but again, it is still a beta and hopefully the final RC version fixes that. As far as the overall heat of the device, it's staying nice and cool. Some people have said it gets a little bit warmer than beta seven. I haven't experienced that. It's a little bit warm to the touch as I opened up the camera and that does take some more processing power, but let's check the thermal camera just to see. And if we go to the hottest point, I saw it hit about 32 degrees Celsius, but right now it's a little bit lower than that. And in Fahrenheit, it's at about 89 and a half degrees. So that's not bad at all. So nice and cool. However, if you have a case on this, it's definitely going to be warmer. So so keep that in mind. If you're finding that it gets really hot, maybe remove that case. If you're in a hot environment, I'm in a pretty neutral feeling environment around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So not bad at all, but in regular environments where maybe you're outside, it definitely can heat up a bit. As far as the battery life, well, that again, let's check the battery cycles and battery health. We'll go into battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 89%. That's after 294 cycles, as you can see here. But as far as battery life, it hasn't been great for me. So if we go over the last 10 days, you'll see yesterday was two hours and 54 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 47 minutes of screen idle time. Today so far has been three hours and 10 minutes of screen active time and we're still between 50 and 75% usage. So not great yesterday, 75% usage, and I only had three hours of screen on time. Now X or Twitter is taking up a bunch of background activity and I have background app activity turned off. I typically close the app. So something's going on with that app. I've heard quite a few people say it's using more power than expected, but in general, it's just not great for me. Some people have a different experience or somewhere in between. If we take a look at Abishek's battery, it seems with beta eight, he's having a similar experience. This is on an iPhone 11 pro max with 95% battery health. And he only has three hours and 37 minutes of screen on time and two hours and 34 minutes of screen off time and use 75%. I'm seeing at best about six hours of screen on time from some people. So it's just not great with this beta. Hopefully the RC really improves that because that's something that I know a lot of people want to see. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17, if you want to try it out at this point with beta eight or the public beta six version, I would say maybe hold off until the event on Tuesday, where that should be the final version. And that's going to be much more stable in theory. That should be much, much better. So that's what I would expect at this point. We typically see the RC right after the event. So if we have that, that should be a better experience.
Now, as far as the comments and what you had to say, let's take a look at a few of those. Chris Palmer 4983 said, running iOS 17 public beta 6 on my iPhone 14 Pro. Overall, great performance with good to great battery life. I easily get through a busy day with moderate to heavy usage with at least 65% of my battery life at bedtime. I feel this is a stable release and look forward to the official release in a couple of weeks. I have not noticed any major bugs, just a minor glitch at times, and I can never get that glitch to repeat. Chloe Reynolds ES9KN says, Hi Aaron, iPhone 14 Pro running public beta 6. Feels like things have stabilized. Battery life and phone temperatures have returned to normal, or near normal at least. Battery life feels a bit less than on iOS 16.6, but it's not impactful. I haven't been noticing any bugs at all during normal use. Noah Messer 5023 said, running iOS 17 beta 8 on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it's been really good. The only bugs I'm having is the notification bug and the stuttering and lag when you enable the search bar for the home screen, swipe between a home screen page, and then swipe down to access notification center. Hopefully the next update will fix those bugs. Can't wait for the final release of iOS 17. Love your videos, Arian. Thank you. J0 said, running iOS 17 beta 8 on 13 Pro Max. First days it was horrible battery life and random heating of the phone. Now it seems to have settled and have been getting decent battery life back along with improved airdrop performance for me. And no overall noticeable bugs at the moment. S. Callen 1976 says, connection to AirPods is amazing now between three different devices, tvOS, iPhone, and Mac. MacBook Pro, and I definitely experienced that. If you're running the latest betas, it's really very good. Bobby21865 said, iPhone 14 Pro Max, public beta 6, couple of issues. CarPlay tends to crash a lot. Volume slider in the control center when they put all the way off will readjust itself back up to the equivalent of pressing the volume up twice. Keyboard with messages apps sticks above text sometimes if you go into emojis and send a text. Other than that, working excellent in most cases. So that's everything with iOS 17 beta 8. Seems to be a pretty good improvement. It's been getting better over the past week or so, but definitely needs a few more things fixed before it's released to the public. Let me know if you've found anything new I haven't mentioned in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.